Hello, this is Janet from Paper and Spark, and in this video I'm going to explain how your inventory for reseller spreadsheet is going to really help you at year-end for tax purposes. And as part of that, we're going to walk through the year-end closeout process to make sure that everything on your spreadsheet is accurate for your tax return. So first I'm going to encourage you to revisit the PDF instructions for the spreadsheet. Um, I link to some very helpful articles in the Paper and Spark library regarding inventory and cost of goods sold. So I want to make sure that before you watch this video you're familiar with what inventory and cost of goods sold are, how they work for tax purposes, and what your tax return looks like regarding inventory. That way you will understand where the numbers I'm talking about are going to go on your tax return. So if you need to take some time to read that, go ahead and do that. Now, remember that for tax purposes, we will need to know a few things for your Schedule C for inventory specifically. You need to know the cost of your beginning inventory, which is going to be zero for your first year or roll over from whatever last year's ending inventory number was. You need to know the total amount you spent this year on inventory, which the spreadsheet will help you with, minus the cost of any items withdrawn for personal use, which the spreadsheet will also help us calculate. And then you need to know the biggie, which is the cost of your ending inventory for the end of the year. Now, if you're using the spreadsheet correctly, um, most of these numbers, like I mentioned, they're going to be calculated for you. Um, but to make sure that they're accurate for tax purposes, we need to take a couple of steps, what I call the closeout process. Now, ideally, you're going to be performing this closeout process on the last day of your taxable year, which for most of us is the last day of the calendar year or December 31st. Now, if you can't actually follow these steps on December 31st, then you want to do them as close to but after 1231 or the end of your year that you can. Um, and just make sure when you're doing it, if it's not actually the last day of the year, do it as if you were doing it on the last day of the year. So you don't want anything from next year already entered in your spreadsheet when you're doing the closeout process. Okay, so step one of the closeout process is going to be to make sure that you have entered all your inventory purchases for the current year into the spreadsheet. So you basically just want to make sure that it's up to date as of 1231. That means looking at any invoices or inventory in your uh, space or warehouse, storage space, whatever, that you have, making sure it's all entered here. This purchases for the year needs to be up to date as of the last day of the year. So take some time to update it if need be. The second step in the closeout process is to verify that the ending units remaining column is up to date. What does that mean? It means doing an end of year inventory count. Okay, it's very painful sometimes if you've got a lot of inventory, it can be a pain in the butt, but you have got to make sure that this is right if you want to be able to rely on this for tax purposes. And that means doing an end of year inventory count. Um, so here's how I recommend doing that. You can do one of two ways. You can go row by row through all your tabs and just check out these numbers by physically looking at your inventory. Okay, do I see any white Coffee First shirts left in my stock? No, there's none there, so the zero is correct, etc., etc. Do I see how many white large mermaid shirts do I have? I've got six. My spreadsheet says seven, so let me update that for six, okay? That is what an inventory count is going to look like. Alternatively, you might want to look at your physical inventory, you know, get out your boxes one by one, get out your containers, look at your shelves, whatever, and count those. Okay, I'm getting all my mermaid shirts out right now and I'm counting them in each size. I've got five of these, I've got six of these, I've got two of these, etc. And then update this where you need to. Why might this number be wrong? There's, there's many reasons. You might have 
waste. You might have trash, some stuff, um, you know, things that had holes or rips or tears or weren't up to par that you threw away. You didn't ever actually sell them, so maybe you forgot to account for them, and now you're going to update your ending units remaining to account for that. Maybe you gave an item away and you forgot to record it as personal use, and you need to do that. Um, maybe, you know, you just made some sales and forgot to update your units sold. Lots of things can happen throughout the course of an entire year. That's why doing an ending inventory count at year end to make sure these numbers are correct is very important. So once you've updated the units remaining columns for all your inventory tabs, you need to save this spreadsheet. Save it and back it up and make copies and do what you need to do. I would recommend calling it, you know, inventory for resellers 2017. Like this is my final 2017 spreadsheet or final 2018 spreadsheet or whatever. I'd give it a year just so you can know like this is the version that I relied upon for my tax return. So you do the year and count as close to 1231 as possible. You might be doing this around when you're filing taxes, or you might do it right at year end and then revisit your final saved spreadsheet later on in the next year when you're doing your prior year tax return. Because, you know, you usually have like three or four months before you actually have to do your tax return for that year. So here's the really handy thing and why it's so important to update all those columns. When you're doing your tax return, you can click on this pink yearly tab and it's going to summarize the main numbers that you need to fill out part three of your Schedule C. So let's take a look at each of these cells just so you can know exactly where they're flowing from so you can make sure they're accurate before you use them for your tax return. All right, you're beginning your inventory. It's not linked to anything. It's gonna to default to zero, but this needs to tie to your ending inventory on last year's tax return. So this number is for you to input. And if you've got ending inventory on last year's tax return, you can simply type that in here and um, the spreadsheet will take it into account. So your 2016 or whatever year you're working in, your total purchases for the year, this is going to be the sum of every gray purchases this year sell from all your tabs added together. Okay, so the spreadsheet is going to add all those numbers together to give you your total inventory purchases for the year. Your total personal use cost for the year is going to sum up all your personal use, cost of personal use amounts in that blue column across all tabs okay it's just adding all those tabs together that's going to give you your personal use cost which is something that you will need to know for your schedule C as well and then your ending inventory this is the cost of your ending inventory at the end of the year assuming you've been updating the spreadsheet as you should and that is going to rely on these cost of units remaining which are summed up here on each tab so it's the sum of all these gray cost of ending inventory amounts okay it's adding all those cells together to give you your cost of ending inventory so this is going to be really easy to just plug into your schedule C but remember they're only going to be accurate if you've been keeping up with your spreadsheet entering things correctly keeping it up to date and performing that ending inventory count at the end of the year to make sure that everything in here is accurate one other thing that I want to note is that it's really important that you do this closeout process that I mentioned because think about it if you don't save a version for the end of a year at the end of the year and you begin inputting like the next year's data in here you're changing this number you're changing this number so you're going to be changing these numbers. You're going to be incorrectly having 2017 purchases in here, and you don't want that. That's why you must follow the closeout process. Save a file for the end of the year after verifying those numbers. Save it and don't use it again in the next year. You're going to use a, a fresh file following the rollover steps that I'm going to discuss in the next video. But that is how you can use this for tax purposes. 
I do go ahead and calculate cost of goods sold here for you. It is a it is a plug number, okay? We are solving for cost of goods sold, just like on your Schedule C. So it's just taking beginning inventory plus your total purchases minus the cost of your personally used items minus ending inventory gives you your cost of goods sold. So this is just so you can keep a running tally of your COGS throughout the year if you want to, but you don't do anything with this number. It's calculated on your tax return. So this is going to be really helpful for you for taxes. Um, and again, just like I state in the PDF instructions, any tool is only as good as what you're putting into it. If you put trash in, you're going to get trash out. So you always want to check and verify these numbers with your actual inventory on hand at the end of the year before you blindly rely on anything in here for your tax return. I have one more video left for you and this video is going to show you how to roll over this spreadsheet to a new year. So this video was all about closing out for the end of the year and getting what you need for tax purposes. The next video is going to show you how to reset the same file for the next year and make sure you're going forward correctly and cleanly. Mm -hmm.